Hello team, thanks for coming and welcome to our training session for React UIKit version 3. I am Hun Baek and I work for UIKit as a JavaScript engineer. Today we have three chapters. First, we will see the architecture of React UIKit, what has been changed and what's new. And second, I'm sure that you're definitely curious about customization. So I'll introduce how to customize with React UIKit after modularization. Lastly, we will try to customize the channel list by customer request. I hope you can get the implementation idea at the end of this session. I was thinking of preparing codes on code sandbox and attaching those links here, but we didn't release beta yet. So let me share some samples that are used in the implementation chapter later. I mean, after release, if you tell me you need it. Great. So this is the first chapter, architecture. Let's look around what happens when pure users have a conversation on the UI kit. Sandbird Chat SDK has allowed developers to implement a chat application without server works, but they still needed to spend much time on UI work. But many customers just want a quick research and they don't want to waste time and effort to make a UI and what they want is just to see their implemented ideas fast. Now, UIKit operates Sandbird Chat without overwork. So we can see they made a conversation space in their application when they just took and used UIKit. I guess you already know about the previous version of React UIKit. So let's see what has been changed and added in version 3. Until now, we have provided smart components like channel list, channel, or channel settings. These smart components have internal logic to use chat SDK, and also they operate data related to each smart component. As an example, the channel list components has channel list and the current channel inside of it. And these smart components are made of certain UI components. You can see the channel smart component is made of a combination of a header, message list, and message input component. In UIKit version 3, we will still provide smart components, but the logic and UI will be divided. So you can choose to use a smart component or the provider and UI components which are matched to the smart component. This is the concept of our UIKit modularization. Let me take the channel list as an example. Until version 2, only the channel list smart component has been provided. So customers could customize using render blah blah props by replacing with some components what they had to implement from A to Z. However, in version 3, we're going to provide channel list provider and channel list UI component. And also the other UI components are there. Channel list header and channel preview will be given. Let's see how we can import those in the code side. We applied tree shaking, so you can get the target module with a specific path, and this path could be changed before release. I already mentioned provider and UI components. However, you need to know about the structure of React UIKit for better use. In UIKit, there is a provider and UI components. And UI components use context hooks to get the data from providers. So now let's see the each object step by step. As you know, provider has logic and every data which is used in UIKit. There are input props for developer settings. Also, state and store are in the provider. Actually, they are the same in meaning. So don't get confused with naming. I'm just saying there is some internal data inside of provider. Anyway, uh, this data is created from provider and managed on real-time basis. And finally, they are exported to the children components through the context. When I say provider creates and operates data, UI components render real UI using the data. And UI components use context hooks to approach the data that provider provides. Also, 
there are input props that allow developers to customize. So for example, the channel UI component should have render message input props and the developer can customize the message input space by setting the props with his new component. And context is data which is created from the provider. UI components are able to get data using the context hooks, whatever they are. So I can say context provides data regardless of the layer of components. Aren't you curious how many modules will be provided? I say everything we have, channel list, channel, channel settings, will have each provider and UI components. And it's same for create channel, added user profile, message search, open channel, and open channel settings. Till now, you may think, hmm, there's not much change. But don't be surprised. We decided to provide every UI component of elementary levels. From version 3, you can use every UI component of Sandberg UI Kit. Look around. There are icon, label, avatar, button, placeholder, emoji reactions, tooltip, everything that you can reuse in customization. Here are two pictures about Channelist component. Channelist has been a heavy solid, but now it's divided to the provider and small UI components. And also there are so many elementary level UI components that I cannot mention all here. So I want to say this change will make you enjoy creating custom components. And fortunately, you don't have to consider what kind of UI libraries you will use anymore. Okay, until now, we have looked into the architecture of React UIKit. Thanks for watching and see you in the next chapter. Thank you.